to vote and we keep hearing from the um, three main parties, so-called main parties, they don't really come clean on where they're going to make the savings and uh, would you like to help your national leaders out? <laughs> Thank you very much for the question and just to say before I come to the lady there I have found the question I, that was about social housing, to address the lack of social housing in this area and ensure the um, party Sorry, the party meets UK targets, no failed promises. Sorry, what are your plans to address the lack of social housing in the area and ensure the party meets UK targets? There are some related questions coming through. Oh. Uh, 
So I recently moved to High Wycombe at Christmas from a um, deprived area of Birmingham that I was in for a few months um, when I was going to the job centre and was also volunteering as the administrator at a pretty large food bank. Um, so I'd like to know why none of the party manifestos say that they will get rid of benefit sanctions. Uh, would it not be better to give incentives and rewards when advisors get someone a job rather than encouraging advisors to sanction people, which I can say from my experience and from statistics at the food bank that this is almost always unfairly. Thank you very much indeed. Sir? Um, Peter, that's right. Just this. And then perhaps we'll take a couple of quick comments from the candidates, if that's all right. But at that point, I'm going to let you put your hand up and I'll choose you one by one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask the panel if they think the extension, the proposed extension of right to buy to social housing tenants is going to do anything to improve the supply of rented accommodation in this country, which is in currently short supply and I think will get shorter. Lovely. Well, some very challenging questions there and we will come back for a few more questions afterwards as well. So, um, gentlemen, I think we're going to just keep it to a few comments each, if that's all right, but we've got questions around... Uh, uh, around savings and insurance, we've got questions around social housing, about benefit sanctions and food banks. Who would like to start? Oh, David Williams, please. And I'm going to be one minute, and I'll just give you a 10 second notice. <coughs> then I'll ting you. Yes, we should insure bank accounts because otherwise it's, uh, it's the ordinary man on the street who suffers uh, when uh, abuses of position by, by banks lead to financial collapses. Um, Properties to let and social housing, um, it's a, a huge waste um, that social housing is being transferred away from the public sector into private hands. Um, it, it's bad enough that it's going um, in right to buy because that reduces the supply, but when you say that um, transfers to housing associations are then also going to be subject to right to buy, so that even housing associations won't be able to build social housing anymore because they have to borrow against their stock in order to finance new builds. We're just going to end up with no social housing left in this country whatsoever. Just and that, that's the way we're going. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Steve, uh, Steve Guy from Lib Dems. I was going to go down the line. I was going <laughs> yeah, to go down the line. Down we're going to go that's quick fire. Right. Okay, uh, the reason you have a deposit guarantee scheme is because people need to have faith and trust in the banks. Uh, otherwise, you get queues outside banks, runs on banks, which we saw at Northern Rock, even though there was a deposit guarantee scheme, but you have to have them, yes, definitely. Um, properties to let in High Wycombe, uh, the, the whole question, I think, comes together because you're trying to rent something in the private sector, we have a lack of social housing in High Wycombe. Uh, I fought against the decision by Wycombe District Council a few years to sell off its private uh, it's, it's social uh, sector to um, a private uh, housing association. And what actually happened was that all the tenants got to vote on whether to be transferred to red kite housing instead of being council tenants. And they were offered incentives of new bathrooms and new kitchens. And, and I think it was a shame that the district council decided to take itself, itself of that responsibility. Um, the right to buy, no, I don't support the right to buy your social housing. I'm very sorry for apart from anything else, it discriminates against those people in private rented properties who are paying higher rents, trying even harder to save for a deposit. Thank Why aren't we helping them? Thank you very much. Can, can I answer that or not? Um, <coughs> right. We, uh, because I, so I suppose what you have to take from the answer you're given is whether people see that as a priority or not. I can in terms of how you one. decide to vote, the, the response. If you'd like to take, take another 10 seconds, if you could keep it, if we could keep yeah, it yeah, very briefly, seconds. because because I'm an animal lover, I've got a cat and a dog and a tank full of fish. Um, Just 10, please, Laura. <coughs> um, because there's a shortage of housing, because there's not enough housing stock. Uh, Thank you very much. No, no, no. We want to make sure we're here from all of the parties, so I'm going to ask Steve if you'll pass along to uh, Steve Baker, please. So, VJ, to avoid a moral hazard in the banking system, uh, deposit insurance should be funded by the banks themselves, and these days it is, and that is a very good thing. Um, properties to let with animals, quite honestly, I, I, don't, I know you feel incredibly passionate about this. I just don't know. I'm sorry I don't know, and I'll be happy to discuss it. 
that you have. All right, there we are. Um, savings. Well, the party, the Conservative Party, has said we're going to save 30 billion. 5 billion from increased tax avoidance and evasion. We've done a lot already. We'll do more. 13 billion from departmental savings by continuing the reduction in spending at the same pace as previously in the Parliament, which is about 1% a year. Now, in a business, you could be told to save a lot more than that every year, so we're going to be looking for 1% a year. And then 12 billion on benefits, which is paid where people get very anxious. Part of it's a freeze. I have been advised that we could expect 7 billion from universal credit, but that has not yet been announced or described. But if it is 7 billion from universal credit, that, that would be a good thing because that would mean more people in work, more people being better off, more people liberated from dependency. Thank you very much. Over to David. Uh, thank you. Well, <coughs> the bank starts off with I think it's I think it's right that uh, savers have I think it's 85,000 up to 85,000 in one bank guaranteed. Um, my understanding of the uh, bank problems was that, first of all, it was caused by Gordon Brown over deregulating the banks, and then, of course, some outrageous currency gambling um, as people chase higher interest rates in basically a fairly low interest rate um, world economy. Um, as far as no properties to let for children or animals, um, ditto, I, I'm afraid I haven't come across that one before, um, so I don't know the answer to that. Um, in terms of savings to, to be made um, on public expenditure, UKIP's uh, manifesto has set a new benchmark in that it is the only manifesto that has been independently costed. Um, it's been recently stated that, in fact, the, uh, the, the three legacy parties' uh, manifestos will probably actually lead to an increased tax burden on most people. Um, the right to buy... Uh, we would only allow British nationals to participate in that. That's, uh, we have time. Thank you very much. Jim, your yep. minute. Yep. Um, sure, in bank accounts, yes, we would, but we would, um, of course, want to put more controls on those banks to actually, so we don't end up in the situation that we've had before. Um, properties let with animals and children, etc. I think you have to really have a look at, this is down to the um, buy to let, and unfortunately, the landlords have the control and the power over, over most people. Um, we have, you know, if you look at sort of new bills, there's there's actual there's actually no VAT on new bills at the moment, where you know where there is a 20% VAT on new and renovations. There's there's none of existing property that needs to be brought up. I have a friend, as similar to you, has has children. She she lives along the, um, the Kingsmead Road. Unfortunately, people, the developers all they want to do is build new houses and build lots more property. Luckily, she has found property on it, but we do need to concentrate or sort of do on the social housing front. Ten seconds now. Okay, no, absolutely. thank you. Ten seconds. You, look at, you have to look at the rules to the right of buy. At the end of the day, the right of buy, these properties aren't ours to sell. They belong to our children and they belong to us. So, you know, right to buy and buy to let, all it does, it favours the rich. It doesn't favour the normal public. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have a round of applause there. Um, no, so, great. Wonderful hostings have given opportunities to raise these issues and draw attention. I'll send my apologies to the gentleman who asked about where are the cuts. So let me just, uh, in case the, our, our candidates want to add that in, because I know one of you did, but um, add that in as I missed it out in my summary of the questions. Let me also read out uh, the, uh, the remaining two questions that were handed in at the door. With the UK national debt currently standing at £1.5 trillion, and growing at a rate of 5,170 per second, does the panel agree with me, but not me, obviously, that it's morally reprehensible to speak of an end to austerity? What steps will your party take to ensure that during the next parliament the UK debt is reduced so that our mistakes are not paid for by our children and grandchildren? And if I can add to that, if we've got time for, it's very nearly half past, just two more questions and then I'll give everybody a, a minute of response and we will run a couple of minutes over there. Uh, can I take this lady at the front? Did, it, did we get any written questions handed in? No? Okay. And I'm going to, it's very, very difficult, there are so many people. I'm going to take the gentleman at the very back there, please. Sorry for, I apologise to those of you who haven't had a chance, but maybe there'll be more hustings later. Go ahead. Please. My name's Linda LaHaye, and I'd like to know, if we're such a rich and wealthy country, why are there so many cuts that are hurting so many people? Thank you very much. The gentleman at the very back there. Is Nicola 
virgin, the most dangerous woman in Britain. <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so uh, returning to the issue of cuts, a question about Nicholas Sturgeon and written question about, about the debt. And also, gentlemen, if you'd like to take the last minute or so, I'm sorry to squash you so much, um, just if you want to add any last comments then. Um, who wants to go first? No, I'll let Steve Baker, Conservative, first then. Only a minute, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, it is so rushed. So, a lady earlier mentioned benefit sanctions. I just point out that Beveridge, in, Beveridge envisaged a subsistence welfare safety net which would be conditional and contributory. So, Beveridge, and you, if you read the Beveridge report, he envisaged it. Uh, so, it is necessary, but I think if you read my speech on it in Parliament, you'd be surprised by what I said, and I hope you will read it. On the national debt, yes, we must live within our means. It's not moral to keep living beyond our means, and the reason it's not moral is because it creates the cruel circumstances that you end up having made promises to people, not being able to keep them. The lady at the front mentioned uh, why are they hurting people. Well, you do have to cut the spending from where it's being made. I mean, that there is, a, well, there is a fundamental limit to how much tax people will pay. We, we raised the capital gains tax rate, and it reduced the revenue. And we may not like, some people may not like the way the world is, but that is the way the world is. You cannot just keep taxing people. They will move abroad, they will stop working. If you want to get the maximum revenue, you have to have wise tax policies and you have to have a flourishing economy. And if you've got a flourishing economy and the right tax policy, you can fund what you're doing. That is what the Conservative Party is trying to do in a responsible manner. Thank you very much, Steve Baker, Conservative. Um, Passing over then, Steve Guy, Lib Dem. I'm just going to go round the loop here this time. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, d very difficult in a minute. The, no, sorry. the reason we have to have some cuts is because we've been running something called a structural deficit, which basically means if we continue the way we are, the national debt keeps increasing because we are spending more money than we are collecting in tax. The only way out of it is either a massive raise, rise in tax or we have to make some cuts. What we've tried to do as the Liberal Democrats in government is to try and tread a middle ground where we protect the people at the bottom of the pile, in particular raising the tax threshold for, for people on modest incomes uh, is a very good example of our philosophy to try and make sure that those with the, the, the less broad shoulders, as it were, are not uh, suffering the greatest part of that burden. But we have to do it. We have to do it because it's not fair on our children, because otherwise they'll be paying back the debt we've been living beyond our means for too long. Thank you very much. Steve Guy from the Liberal Democrats. Uh, David Williams from Labour. A lot of what Steve says um, is ideologically motivated. Tax cuts, and as far as the Conservatives are concerned, are ideologically good. They don't really care, actually, about the impact it has on ordinary people, but they want to do it in the same way they want to sell off property, because it's ideological. They want a small state, they want free enterprise, as Steve would say, they want honest money. What they're not focusing on, and if I may say so, they're missing the point, I think, of what politics is for. Somebody said earlier the first, uh, the first obligation of government is to provide security. Well, that may be, say, defence of the realm, but I think the second one is to look after your people. And if you have to maintain taxes at certain levels, by the 50% tax rate, and then it's right to do so. If you, do, if, if you have to support your people, and that means maintaining inheritance tax, you do that. We do not need to have these tax cuts. It's being done for ideological reasons. Thank you very much. Okay, David. so we, our plan to reduce the deficit is a mix. We invest in the economy, we get GDP up. Okay? Thank you very much, David Williams. We have some tax Labour. rises, we have some spending reductions. Over to Jen Bailey Greens. <laughs> um, well, as far as I can see, I don't actually, I can't see that the um, debt has been reduced at all after five years. About um, it seems, if not worse, um, to you, to you or me or Joe Public. Unfortunately, what happens at the moment? All this, because all this um, government does, it supports the rich. You hope that it will actually trickle down to the poor. It's not <coughs> happening. We, you know, we are getting worse, uh, worse off and the equality gap is getting bigger and bigger. 
They're worried about, okay, people, if you keep taxing the rich, they will move away. Well, hang on a minute, if the banks decide to move, aw move abroad, then so be it. Why don't we go back to what we were before, being a good manufacturing country and actually s doing, making things again? Ten seconds. Um, that's it, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, really. Thank you very much, David. Uh, uh, sorry, Jen Bailey, Green Party. And David Meacock, you keep one minute. Thank you. Uh, the reason why cuts hurt so many people is because there was a statistic given just before the last election that over 50% of the population are either receiving benefits or employed by the state. So of course if you're having to reduce, uh, try and reduce that sort of expenditure, you are going to hurt a lot of people. Um, the national debt has doubled uh, contrary to what the expectations of fixing the economy. The deficit has failed to be reduced to zero, as was promised by George Osborne. It is still over 90 billion a year, which just basically means that uh, the debt is increasing, but at a slightly slower rate than it was when Gordon Brown ran it at 170 billion a year. Um, so, yes, it is immoral to talk about an end to austerity. We've got to get this debt down. Um, only UKIP have got a cost of program uh, that will mean that we can soften the pain a bit with some, some uh, tax cuts which will actually benefit mostly those at the bottom That's and in the, in the middle uh, region. Thank you very much David Meacock for UKIP. So then um, we are a couple of minutes over but I would like to say a couple of thank yous if we may. Um, thanks very much indeed to All Saints Church for hosting today. light and engineers and sound and everything like that, really wonderful. Um, also we'd like to, 38 Degrees has asked me if I could also say a thank you to Bucks Free Press that have helped promote this, in, even though it was coming straight on the heels of their own and they took the approach that well, in that case let's see this is an opportunity, we'll do it as a, a pair of hustings and uh, so that's very, very much appreciated by members of 38 Degrees. Um, our thanks to 38, well my thanks if I may say that, um, to 38 Degrees for going ahead with organising this Hustings. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll remind you if I may that if you are interested in finding out more about their work or perhaps getting involved in, in, in Wickham 38 Degrees, which is a very independent network of some very interesting people I can assure you. Their email, as I said, is on that leaflet or speak to one of the, the people with the, the triangle badges on as they are at the moment. And uh, finally, I hope I haven't missed anybody out there. Thanks to, uh, no, sorry, two finally, thanks to our candidates uh, for their time and what I'm sure is in the middle of a very exhausting campaign. I can only say uh, good luck to all of you. And thank you very much. And I'm sure that I hope that you feel that some of the questions that you've submitted that we've been able to ask um, although in the time available you may have had fairly short answers, uh, not only have you heard something and seen the priorities, but perhaps by asking those very questions you're, you're influencing the longer term processes that are part of our extremely valuable democratic institutions. So the final thank you then is to your good selves for coming tonight. Thank you very much indeed.